All right, so as we move further down our arm, we're looking at our antibrachium or our, um, or our forearm, and what we see is that there are two bones next to one another. Right? We're going to call it the radius and the ulna. U.S. and the ulna. So the radius and the ulna, how do you tell the two apart? Right? Well, we're going to start with the ulna here. You can see that this one here is our ulna. Right? We're looking at an anterior view here. Right? Again, this is going to be of a right arm. Right? So this is a right anterior view. All right, anterior. So that one's our ulna. Over here, this is our ulna. Okay, so our ulna is a little bit longer than the radius, right? That would be a good assumption to make. So if you have the two of them together, the ulna is a little bit longer than the radius. Uh, one thing that you can't see here, uh, which is a good way to help identify, uh, I think that the ulna kind of looks like a crescent wrench. Right? And if you don't know what a crescent wrench is, it kind of looks like a bottle opener. There we go. Um, so if you look at this end of it here, right, it kind of looks like a wrench or an, uh, a bottle opener. Um, but what I, you can also notice is that it looks like the letter U. Right? You can see the letter U right here. U for ulna. Okay? The ulna is the one bone, remember when I was talking about the humerus, I said generally the proximal end of a bone is the uh, where you're going to find the head of a bone. Well, the ulna is the exception to the rule. This end down here is actually going to be the head, and that is the inferior side of the ulna. Right? So the head of the ulna, that's what this little piece right here is. This is the head. Okay, the head of the ulna. Uh, the little blip at the end of the ulna there right, is this little bump right here and this little bump right here right this is the styloid process the styloid process of the ulna and remember when we were talking about the skull we mentioned the styloid process right up here by the mastoid process right it looks like the end of a pen or a pencil right so the head and the styloid process are going to be at the distal end of our ulna Right, so if you look at the proximal end, you can see the big letter U. Right, the distal end, you see the head and the styloid process of the ulna. What are some of the other parts that we can identify on our ulna? Well, this part right here, right, this bump, right, we're talking about this bump right here, right, the point of our elbow, right. So if I show you, there it is. Everything's backwards. Uh, the point of our elbow, right, we call that the olecranon process. The olecranon process. Right, so that's the bump, the end of your elbow. Right? Then you can see this little cutout section, which is what makes the letter U. And that's what they're talking about with this bump right here, this, uh, uh, this line going right here. We call it the trochlear notch. Right, so the trochlear notch is what actually grabs onto the trochlea on the humerus right, to help form that elbow joint. Um, what that does, that's what allows our arm to open and close, right, to, to flex and extend your elbow. Right, comes from that joint right there where the trochlear notch grabs onto the trochlea of the humerus. Right? The last one is the coronoid process, and that's this bump right here, right? or this bump. coronoid process. Right, so the coronoid process, when you flex your elbow, fits into the coronoid fossa, which is just above the trochlea, right? So again, we go back and we think about our names as we were looking at uh, the humerus. These names are starting to come back, and they help us identify these pieces of the radius and the ulna. Right, so the olecranon Olecranon process, trochlear notch, 
coronoid process. Okay. Uh, then we go down to the distal end and you have the head and the styloid. The head and the styloid process. I think those are all the big pieces that I have you guys actually identify on the uh, ulna. Actually, there's one more, right? And that one last piece is where the head of the radius is actually going to attach and where the head of the ulna will go in. But uh, the head of the radius attaches. So let's do this. There it is. Um, so here's a picture of the bone itself. And again, this is the anterior side, and you're looking at a right uh, arm or right ulna. Right? Here is the olecranon process at the top the coronoid process, and in between is the trochlear notch. Okay. This little smooth area, a lighter colored area on this piece here, right, is the radial fossa. The radial fossa. So radial fossa is where the head of the radius articulates with the ulna. Okay? So it makes a little, it's a little bit weird. We're saying it's the radial something, but we're on the ulna. Right? So the radial fossa is where the head of the radius is actually going to articulate. So as you're trying to put these two bones together, right, you know that you should put the head of the radius in the radial fossa. And that's found just to uh, the side of the coronoid process. Okay? So that should do it for our Alma, uh, the next piece is our radius, and we can actually look at the radius from this side as well. Um, starting at the superior end, right, or the superior epiphysis, proximal epiphysis, this is the head of the radius. Right? For the most part, the head of a bone is the more proximal end, right? so that makes sense here. After we have the head, there's a constriction point, so we call it the neck. And there's a really big bump right here. Okay. We call it the radial come on, wow, this is not working well. Uh, the radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity is where our biceps actually insert. So you think about your biceps brachii uh, on the anterior side of your humerus, comes down and crosses our elbow joint and attaches to our radius. So when you contract your biceps, it's pulling on that portion, the radial tuberosity. It's pulling on the radius and making our arm flex, right? Making our elbow flex is the better term for that. And so that's our radial tuberosity, right? They name a few other things off on the radius here. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, but as we come down, we have got down at this end another styloid process. We call it the styloid of the radius. And the styloid process of the radius. And then neither of them show it that fantastically. This is actually going to be it here. We scribbled in right there. Um, you would see a little indent, and we call that the ulnar notch. Right? When you remember the radial notch was where the head of the radius went, the ulnar notch is going to be where the head of the ulna goes. Right? So that's going to be our ulnar notch. Right, and that should do it for those two bones. Right, so we've gone through our pectoral girdle, we've done the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. Our next video is going to cover the wrist and the hand, and even though um, these have taken quite a long time to do, the wrist and the hand are not going to take a whole lot of time at all. So we'll jump into that next.